So, hello. Uh, I'm Antoine Thomas, and with Angel Borro, we will uh, present um, an empathetic approach to containerized deployments. And the general idea is to uh, make products available for every RAN, uh, being technical, non technical, uh, cloud, or whatever. Agenda. So I will start with a quick presentation of uh, Highland, so the company, and Alfresco, the solution. And we'll speak about some users and use cases, and then introduce different Docker solutions based on that. And then Angel will do, I would say, a more technical uh, presentation about uh, how to run stuff, actually. And I will come back with some conclusion, and if we have time, questions. So Highland is a brand new member of the Linux Foundation. We actually became a member uh, in August this year. Um, and we are a leading content service provider. So um, we provide services <coughs> to remove all the paper and all the problems with using document and contents. Uh, and we provide ways to um, automate them. The company is 13 years old. Um, we are based uh, near Cleveland in Ohio, and we are close to 5,000 people now, with offices all around the world. Um, being focused on content, uh, we have uh, a lot of verticals, but healthcare, education, insurance, government, and financial are the main. Um, market for us where there are lots of actually document and content indeed uh, working with uh, contract human resources and so on and we have also new market coming like fashion um, where I mean fashion uh, manufacturers um, are aware know that there are plenty of new kind of content like videos also that come and so we focus now on, on being uh, really I would say, include uh, native products. Um, so we have open source solutions. So the, the main ones are Alfresco and Nuxeo, by the way. Uh, so we are a leader in electronic content management and digital asset management. And we are working on other cool solutions, uh, other cool open source solutions, I mean, in the future. We are also uh, a strong open source user for a long time. Uh, indeed, to build products, services, and uh, customer solutions. And we have a strong legal compliance culture because of our customers requires it. So what is Alfresco? We will use Alfresco in this demonstration. We will show how to deploy it depending on use case. But I think it's interesting to have a, a quick um, introduction about what it does. So um, it, it's uh, really an open um, repository for documents and content, it's scalable, and it provides so, um, search performance. Uh, you can add process solutions, and you can actually integrate it in your current uh, information system, uh, like brand, like I mean, solution like SharePoint, um, SAP, and so on. So you can store, archive, retrieve, search, modify um, all your content over time, including very long period of time. Uh, the real interesting fact is that uh, it's in Proving collaboration uh, between uh, company department, between people, uh, it removes all the low value tasks uh, around, I mean, managing content. <coughs> so let's speak about, um, I mean, go into the core of this presentation. Um, I would say we have, so to deploy Alfresco, you have so some containers. So we are using Linux containers. You can also use other solution like Ansible and so on to deploy, but I mean, the purpose of this, of this talk is to speak about Docker. Um, so as you can see, you have uh, a certain amount of container. Uh, so indeed, you need a database uh, and stuff like that. The main component is the repository. And then you have services around uh, for search, transform, and so on. So depending on your use case, uh, I mean, if you think about the customer journey, 
uh, at first, you have some business analysts that would like to <coughs> evaluate your product. They don't know how to code, they don't know how to deploy some command line stuff into a virtual machine. So, um, but they need to take a decision whether Alfresco is a good solution uh, for their business case. So in this case, uh, Docker extension, so Docker extension is a desktop solution that would, I mean, allow you to run all the stack of containers and then let you access this from your browser. Come on. So this is really for people who are not technical at all. Then you have the tech evaluation. So some tech guy uh, who will use Docker occasionally uh, and we'd like to see, I mean, how difficult it is or, I mean, to test some different configuration stuff um, using uh, Docker Compose, okay? So in this, so the left, the left part of the slide are mainly for evaluation uh, of the solution. And on the right side uh, of the slide, so you have a production, so, I mean, DevOps mainly, people will, will actually run uh, Alfresco for your company and for your end users and scale it depending on how many content you add, how many users you add and this kind of things. And then the last case is indeed uh, Alfresco, I mean, is a really useful solution but it really makes sense if you integrate it into your information system. So at one point you will have to develop components, extensions, use APIs to, to retrieve and work on content. So Docker Compose SDK in this case uh, is really, I mean, a good way uh, to provide um, um, a software development kit around Alfresco so that the, your developers can do this integration work. I will let the voice to Angel. Thanks, Antoine. So, uh we are going uh, to try to solve all the different use cases that uh, Antoine described. So the first one is the, the Docker extension. So we are using this for people that really uh, the most important things is the time to evaluate the project, uh, the easiness to deploy that. So I want just to click and, and test the, fe the features of the product without no many dependencies and so on. So this is why we are choosing the Docker extension for that. Uh, remember that Docker extension is still in beta status, so we need to wait uh, a bit uh, before providing that uh, for production environments, but we are starting uh, to test that. And uh, the only requirement is just to, to have Docker desktop. With that, you are able to run Alfresco. And just clicking a single button, you are able to test the, the platform. So this extension is not yet available in the official marketplace because as I said, we are experimenting with that. It's working and it's uh, something that you can uh, test, but it's not yet official, I said. So we are going to run a small demo on that. I'm going to play a video, uh, not because I'm refusing uh, cowardly uh, to, uh, to do it live, but I want to skip you the waiting part of that. So just the first thing is to have extensions enabled on your Docker desktop. This works for Linux, for Mac, for Windows. And then you have the, the Alfresco extension. And in this Alfresco extension, you have only this run button. So you don't have anything else. So you just click the run button, wait for, uh, for a minute in order to get all the different containers that uh, Antoine was describing running because you know that we need to, to wait a bit since everything is synchronized and, and up. So we can uh, wait a bit. We can also inspect the, the status of the different containers. Um, uh, and after, uh, after this time, Alfresco is ready to be tested. So we have all the containers ready. And at this point, we can start to test the product. So with this single button, we are able to deploy a complex product with different containers, with relations between all the components and so on. So with that, we are able to test the product. We are testing now that this has been deployed as expected. And once we uh, finish our evaluation of the product, we can restore the system back to the, the Docker desktop to the original status. 
So we can just go back to the Docker desktop, to the extension, click the stop button, and everything is uh, as, as before we, we started with that. So that is, uh, again, very easy for the people just to test that with, uh, with a single button just to get all the features of Alfresco uh, on containers. Once again, this is uh, beta. You have the source code available. At the end of the presentation, the slides are on the application. So at the end of the, of the slides, you have all the links for uh, all the source code or, uh, for all the application that we are uh, seeing today. So you can uh, go and play with that. But remember that this is beta. We develop a UI application. Uh, the recommendation of Docker is to develop that with React and uh, that material UI components. So we are doing in that way. And we are using part of the, of the, uh, of the SDK, the, the Docker client part and the navigation part. And this allow us to control all the different status of the containers and all the different life cycle of the different containers, the relationships and, and so on. So uh, since we are still developing that, we are missing some features like the support for the new <laughs> Apple Silicon chips. We are still working on that. We are not deploying all the containers. We still need to deploy all the UI uh, containers with the, with the tool. And we need also to increase the, increase the, the verbosity. It has to be, provide more feedback to the, to the user. just to, uh, to guess what is happening on, on, the, um, on the background, right? And finally, the ability to reuse the extension uh, with the time. So I want to play that today. And tomorrow, I want to see exactly the same thing in the same way I left that before. So we are working on that. And also, if you are not still playing with Docker extensions, I recommend you to follow these Docker extension precaution uh, guidelines. This is what you need to do before uh, pushing your uh, Docker image. A Docker extension, in the end, is a Docker image to push your Docker image to the Docker marketplace, right? So you can uh, follow that. And once that is ready, you can be also part of this marketplace. OK, that was the first one. With that, we are covering uh, that first use case. And now we are moving to the Docker Compose. So these kind of users want to evaluate the product. And they want also something easy to deploy. Uh, but they don't mind uh, much about the dependencies because they want to uh, like to test that with, on, with a technical deployment. It's, uh, it has no persistent storage, no support for customization. But it's something that uh, can be used to test also the, the product with, uh, with something that is like opinionated because we are providing default configuration, but you can still deploy that like in the real life. So for that, we are providing instructions in the Alfresco community downloading page. Um, mainly what you, are, uh, what you are getting with that is a Docker Compose jump file, and you need to start that. But you need Docker Desktop. You need also Docker Compose install, Git client, and probably the, the command line. So we are creating like more barriers to this kind of users to, to test the, um, the product. So again, I'm going uh, back to the second video, if I'm able to find that. Perfect. So uh, this should be the, the process for evaluating the, the for a technical evaluating of the, or evaluation of the of the of Alfresco. Just cloning the repository again. You have this repository with all the different uh, deployment uh, templates. We are cloning the, the repository. Then we need to to choose the right uh, Docker Compose configuration that includes some out of the box configurations and default configuration. So once we have that, we can just the regular command docker compose app, and the product is again uh, ready to be used. So in this case, we are also deploying all the UI part of the product. We include a, an Nginx uh, reverse proxy, so you can access to all the services using the same port. So it's a bit more easy uh, for, for a technical uh, evaluation just to, to use this, this kind of method. So again, we are checking that everything is up and running. And in this case, we are using the UI 
in order to test that before I was using the repository, right? So this is how Alfresco looks. This is the UI and we can give the credentials and we are in the system. So in this use case, we uh, require a bit more technical skills, but you are still able to evaluate the platform with, what, with one single file in the end. Okay, that is enough for this use case, I guess. And uh, what we are doing in Alfresco is just to create a set of Docker Hub, of Docker images in the Docker Hub, and we are getting that on a Docker Compose. We are trying also to apply some memory limits just to, to have some uh, kind of requirement for the final user, just to say, okay, you need at least a gigabyte of, of RAM to run this Docker Compose, but it's so simple uh, as that. So that was that the second method, uh, and now we are moving to a different, to the Docker Compose installer, to a different uh, requirement from the use case. So in this case, the people want to use that uh, probably to customize Alfresco, to deploy uh, some, uh, some customization on it, and many people are using that also to deploy Alfresco in production. We are also supporting some other deployments, as Antoine said, but many uh, community users, yes, with that is enough for them. So uh, we are providing persistent storage, we are supporting uh, add-on uh, deployment, uh, customization, and we are also recommending this for production environments. So in this case, the user experience is just, again, the command line, but we are providing them a set of questions in order to customize the Docker Compose. So we are taking that and we are creating a Docker Compose and a set of files in order to produce this configuration. So you can get like about 40,000 combinations and customizations of the product with that, but you need Docker Desktop, Docker Compose, and this is a Geoman generator, so you need also Node.js, Geoman, and the generator we, we are providing. But the better is to see that uh, live, so let me uh, go again with this. And we are again in the command line, but in this case we are going to use the Geoman generator. So with that, we are uh, just uh, trying to identify the options that the, the users uh, want to, um, uh, to deploy in the system. So we have like the, the version, the first, uh, it's important thing, the version of the product, you can choose that. Also the, the amount of memory you want to allocate to Docker, uh, if you want a web proxy with MTLS or not, the name of the, of the server, uh, the default password for the admin user, uh, the port uh, that you want to use for all the services, some additional assistant like FTP, you can use another database instead of the default PostgreSQL. Um, what else? So you can use also some configuration for the searching engine. Uh, again, more configuration for, for communications. We have also a message uh, queue and you can define credentials for that if you want. SMT uh, service. LDAP for authentication. You can also deploy some uh, out of the box customizations on the product. And with all that options, also if you are running in Windows, we are doing the volumes in, in a different way. With all that options, we are creating a set of files that includes all the uh, configuration that is required. It's a Docker Compose again, but this Docker Compose includes that customized Docker files uh, that are extending the official Alfresco Docker image with the customization. And the same for Alfresco, share and config for these three applications. So once we have that, again, Docker Compose app with all this uh, configuration, and, and now we are getting Alfresco, but with a specific set of subsystems, configuration, uh, password, ports, and so on. So it's also easy for the people just to use this one because they can also just uh, use the, the customization with this uh, kind of, uh, of deployment. And uh, again, we are testing that is uh, working fine. So this is something easy to do for the, for, the, for the users and also you can use that 
to have like a deeper technical evaluation and even to, to use that in your, in your production environment. Okay, let's move on how we did that. So we were using Geoman for that. Geoman, you can write Geoman generator with TypeScript. So we have a, like a template, a set of templates, and we are combining all the different templates with code in order to produce, again, a Docker Compose, but with extensions, with persistence on the, on the services that require persistence and, and so on. So um, again, you have also the source code for the Geoman generator. It's available if you want to, to inspect that. And also with the ability to deploy customization. So in this stage, you have something like very flexible uh, to deploy. And finally, uh, we are also thinking on people that is developing for the platform. So in this case, you uh, don't have uh, like a requirement to deploy that uh, for production. Uh, you don't want to customize the deployment of the application, but you need to deploy uh, your own uh, extensions, your own uh, source code into, uh, into the product. So for that, what we have is an archetype of Maven, and with that archetype, we are providing a set of tools to uh, include your code into the application. So for that, you need Docker Desktop, Docker Compose, and mainly the customization in, in Alfresco is done with Maven Java. So uh, with, with that, again, if we go to the, to the final demo, I promise you, we are going to see how that works Leap. So we are creating a project, this is a base project to customize Alfresco in both Alfresco and Sir, the repository and the UI layer. So with that, we are creating a, the, the base project and this base project is including uh, all these kind of tools. So uh, in this case, we are selecting the all-in-one that includes the customization for the repository and also for the UI. That is the option two, yeah. Okay, so we are choosing this one. We are choosing also the, 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 the version of the, of the product that we are developing for. Um, we have the group ID, the artifact ID. This is a regular Maven uh, artifact. And with that, we are creating a set of resources with a, with a set of folders that are prepared to uh, develop your, uh, your customization and also to deploy both uh, platform that is a fresco, the repository, and SER. So you can see platform, SER, platform Docker, SER Docker. So this all includes the different uh, resources for you. But in the end, you are just uh, creating a Java application. So you don't need to take care about the Docker, the extension, uh, about building the Docker Compose. So are just coding in Java on a regular ID and it, that is uh, enough. So with that, we are starting again with this tool, with this uh, specific tool. We are starting again the product, and this time you get the product with the customizations on it. So you can test how that, how that works, and it has also some uh, something uh, that uh, allows you to, to include additional configuration if, if you want to, but mainly this is the, the easiest way to, uh, to deploy that with Alfresco. Okay, so once we did that, this is really more simple conceptually. So we have the platform and the SER Maven uh, projects. We are including the artifact of this folder into the uh, platform Docker, that is a Docker file that is modified in order to include this code. And we are using this for the Docker file that is in the, so for the Docker Compose file that is in the Docker folder. And with that, we are building again a Docker Compose that is reading the Docker images, the Docker images with the customizations, and we are uh, deploying that. We have also some persistence on that because when we are, you are testing, probably you want to keep your data in between one test and the, and the other test. Okay, and I guess that was everything. So Antoine, I covered all your use cases. And <laughs> I, I think can. so. So last cases indeed um, is when you need to scale 
I would say, at large. Um, so it's not covered by this talk today, but indeed we provide solution for people who want to have, I mean, that much amount of content and processes that um, you need to really scale. So we provide solution with uh, Kubernetes and Helm, and uh, this is already available on uh, the GitHub repositories. So uh, I will provide some, uh, I mean, additional resources if you want to hack a bit on that. <coughs> As I told, everything is on GitHub. Um, I was thinking it would be cool to add the actual link at the end. Uh, I mean, it's streamed, but it is all recorded. If you want to make, let's say, a, a screenshot of this one, uh, so you have the, the actual link to go to the uh, ICS deployment re re uh, repository, this kind of things. So you can play with it after the presentation. Um, pictures uh, in the slide were done with stable diffusion, it's just giving the credit. You should play with that, it's crazy. And then, I mean, at the end of our presentation, we have a booth in the exhibition area. So if you want to chat with us or ask for a demonstration or explanation, I mean, you're welcome. We will be there in a few minutes. So I was, uh, I mean, I'm on Twentomas, and so this was on Helboro. You can also follow us or get in touch via Twitter or LinkedIn and maybe follow our blog for more content. So thank you very much. No questions? Maybe that was. We, we have time for a few questions, I guess. Yeah, yeah. if you want. I can make the same report when you were in the Power Bank program. And my question on the entire Power Bank graph is what are the implications if you make the standard more value than the So the question is what value we can get uh, from using the extension? I will let Angel give yeah. the answer. So we. We are delivering our first code with Docker Compose for years, and we found many users, many community users, mainly trying to evaluate the, the product and, and having problems to deploy that because you need a bit of skills to use Docker Compose. It's not that hard, but you need at least JIT to download the Docker Compose. Probably you are in another directory, so it's hard for them. So we discovered that with that Docker extension, you just need one single program. You can just search that on the marketplace, hit the run button, and at the end, uh, you just hit again the uh, another button, and it's open uh, first on your browser, and you are ready to go. So, the so, so it's it's a way of delivering all this complexity on a simpler way, on on the simplest possible way, right? So this is uh, we have. The, the product is open source, so anyone can uh, test the product. So we, we don't know about the background of that people trying to test the product. So we are trying to limit all the barriers to, to test the product. I, I would say an interesting use case is for people that are not DevOps or developers or all, but maybe a lot of people using Alfresco are actually business analysts. They will um, actually create in Alfresco all the kind of content, all the processes, the roles, uh, use uh, BPM and you know solutions to, to, to organize that. And those guys will, I mean, not use common light at all. So using, for example, Docker Desktop is a good way to actually ship the actual containers uh, and, I mean, make it available to a very, I would say, advanced end user, but that will no code at all, you know? But at least they can evaluate and test uh, and choose Alfresco at the end. And then, I mean, well, they will start to deploy it in production. Some technical people will use, um, a more, I would say, more classic ways to scale it. Okay, so if I was to give you an example, and if I have a development team on say, uh, just a, a three-tier architecture, System that had a, a web front end, some sort of business layer, and a persistent store in, in the back. And they have uh, container images for each one of those. Okay, So it can either write some sort of Helm chart to get that synced up with Kubernetes, where it's part of that. What does your, uh, what does Alfresco do for a business analyst in that case? So if my team had a business analyst, what, what would they be using Alfresco to do with those three images? 
So uh, Alfresco is actually is a is a content repository in the it's a content repository. So you can actually um, store, retrieve, search, uh, create value added uh, around your content and get rid of paper, for example. So invoices, contracts, all these kind of things. Okay, and then around that you can create processes. So that's what I use. Uh, I spoke about BPM and so business process um, management notification. Uh, so that actually you 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 can uh, automate make automation on i would say low added value task you know so that can be done by alfresco you can also add roles depending on i don't know your company department your managing roles um, put business rules for decisions and so alfresco is organizing all that yeah but, but i guess sorry anton i guess that the question is uh, why to do all that all that things if I have everything ready and running in Kubernetes, yeah. right? So, so I, I have all my uh, stuff. It's running in Kubernetes. Why I need to care about that? What are you providing with that? Yeah. Okay, so we are just decreasing the complexity, right? Okay. So if you choose Alfresco, then you can move to the Kubernetes deployment with the with Helmsar, with Scalina, with so on. But you need to know the product before that. Yeah. If you are not able, if you, if you need to, to spend a lot of time to deploy the product and to test the product, yeah. then probably you are not going to reach to the Kubernetes stage. So we need to, we are uh, aiming to provide something very simple to test the product, just to see if that fits to your requirements, okay. right? So these are the different stages. So we, we are approaching to the, <laughs> To the final stage, just to uh, to give you the the ability to test the different uh, features of the product that from the, the, the from the Docker extension that is mainly the features to the Docker Compose that is just choosing your configuration, your database, your authentication, your whatever. So you are able to do that to the to the development. And if you can test everything and you say, okay, uh, it's good for me. Then you can move to the to the Kubernetes deployment, but probably you're not investing um, much time, right, to evaluate the product. So it's not a final solution for the for the users. Okay. So this is our strategy because, uh, as I said, this is a product, and we have like thousands of, of people trying to uh, find out <laughs> what are we doing. <laughs> So this is our, our way to give them the, the easy solution to, to approach the product. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you said that my favorite word many times is test. Uh, so I like to test uh, what I'm doing, especially with, with development teams. I want to know my development teams are concentrating on testing and thinking about testing and thinking about what they're writing and what they're doing and how that's going to look when it gets uh, out to the wild. And testing is like obviously a massive part of that. So anything that can help them yeah. Yeah. Test and evaluation. Yeah. That's so it. we we have also some hot reloading on some parts of the product, so you are able to test in Docker with some ability of hot reloading, mm -hmm. right? So we are also working working on that. Yeah. And everything is is uh, you have the source code for that, so you can just uh, pick <laughs> whatever you you need to apply to your uh, to your problem. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so I think we're good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very interesting conversation. Yeah.